good to see everyone and we welcome you here in the house of the Lord here at Solid Rock this morning and, and thank you for being with us and amen and I my hope and our hope and pastor's hope is that we can all leave leave better than we came and uh, I looked at my wife was walking in and smiled and said let's go in here and get some help amen I tell you it's sure good to be in the house of the Lord amen after battling and and swinging all week in the world amen and coming here and 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 and, and to get to eat the bread of life and and to be refreshed man is something we're very blessed and uh uh amen how many's thankful for good good Pentecostal uh, hardcore preaching amen <laughs> hallelujah amen same here amen it's it's nothing like it amen we uh, uh no matter what denomination, I mean, I just prefer something pretty strong for myself, amen. So either way, if you're here, a member or visiting, amen, you're in for a treat this morning. We welcome you so much, and uh, we're going to go ahead and receive the tithes and offerings before we get into, uh, you know, the Word and Sunday school and stuff, but uh, uh, we'll get into the Word, and you know, um, I was uh, praying and thinking on, you know, uh, there's this... I've said so many things, you know, about uh, offering, but how many knows it's so blessed to be able to give, amen, and uh, it's just such a blessing to be able to give, but one thing that always comes back to me is the scripture where it says, seek, it's out of St. Matthew 6, it says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all other things would be added unto you. So, you know, you go to thinking how Jesus, he gave, or how the Lord, how God gave his only son, amen, and, and how, how, amen, how could we not want to give something back to God, amen? How can we not? And, you know, how, how many has ever, I mean, God spoke to you to give a certain amount, and, and maybe you didn't, you know, or maybe God spoke to you to tithe a certain amount, and maybe you didn't. So where, where do you think that thought comes from, amen, that to not to do it, amen? I believe the enemy don't want us to be blessed, amen, and... But I love the scripture that says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all other things be added unto you. In verse 31, I back up there, it said, Take no thought, what shall we eat, or what we shall we drink? It says, Or what we shall be clothed with, for all these things, the Gentiles, or I will say the world. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. Amen. God know that you would be here this morning. Amen. Don't let Satan rob you of your blessing. As we receive the tithes and offerings this morning, I ask the offering taker to come. One thing, amen, he, he may not rob you of your praise. Amen. But if he can, he will rob you from being financially blessed this morning. I ask you to, to overcome that. And amen. You, you are a tither. Amen. I, I rebuke that spirit that says, oh, you can. You are a tither. You are the head and not the tail. Lord. Oh, Satan, I am blessed. Uh, amen. I may have $5 in my pocket, but I tell you, that's the most blessed $5 I have ever seen. Amen. It, it's amazing how God takes, uh, you know, the people that seem like they're never going to get nowhere in life or don't have much money, and God prospers and blesses them always. Amen. That always, always does. Reach your hands this way. Let's ask the Lord's blessings this morning. Father, we just thank you. Lord, we praise you, Lord, for always meeting the needs, Father. We thank you for keeping us all through the week, Father, through hell, through sickness, through, through fright, through depression. Lord, through it all, you kept us, Lord. Let us sow into the kingdom of God this morning, Father. We rebuke any spirit that would hinder us from being blessed this morning, Father. We're sowing mightily into the kingdom of God. We're tithing, we're giving, Lord, and knowing without a doubt, Lord, it's not in vain, Father. We thank you for it. We praise you in Jesus' name.
voice this morning. Hallelujah. Your name is power. Lift your voice. Your name is healing. Your name is love. We're going to break every stronghold. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. Sing it one more time because your name is power this morning. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is healing this morning. It's healing this morning, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you for your healing this morning. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. Hallelujah. Over every heart and every mouth. Yes, Jesus. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I want to sing it one more time. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, we can speak. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. He's worthy. such a strong presence of the Lord here this morning. And I want to tell somebody, amen, uh, man, I want to tell somebody, you're right where you need to be this morning, amen. And, you know, Satan wants to say, you know, you got to be good to be in the house of the Lord, or you got to be this, or you got to be that. But you know the Word of God said, go out. He told his disciples, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, and amen. Church is for the people that's hurting, amen. Church is the people who, amen, who stumbles and falls, amen. Church is for the people, amen, who need help, amen. Amen. Just as well as those who want to lift up God, but God, church is a hospital, people. Amen. So, amen, you're right where you need to be here this morning. Amen. Whatever whatever, whatever you got to do to get help this morning, I encourage you to do so. And with that being said, help me make welcome Pastor of Solid Rock Church, Brother Wayne Keith. Hallelujah. Because I speak Jesus. How many knows that's the only name that's above every name this morning? I'm so glad to be in church this morning. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise if you're glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I come for one reason and one purpose, and that's to love Jesus. Would you raise your hands and just tell him again that you love him this morning? Hallelujah. Robin, you awesome job with that singing that song. Let's be. Can you sing a chorus of that with us one more time this morning? Over every heart, every Oh, yes. Because I know there is peace in your presence. I speak Jesus. Because yes, your, your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is love. Break every storm. Shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Hallelujah. Heaven knows he's a mighty good God this morning. Amen. Let's give him a great big shout of praise. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. He's an awesome God this morning. Amen. Appreciate you be seated. God bless you. Welcome you again to the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Thank you for your faithfulness being in the house of the Lord. And Amen. God is a good God. Somebody shout, God is good this morning. Shout again, God is good this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to say amen. Uh, Sister Gail Nicholson, she got two sisters with her this morning from out in Missouri. And uh, Sister Lois Johnson and Sister Martha Howis. Is that what that? Povis. Povis. All right. Would you give them a good hand for their time being here this morning? God bless y'all. Thank you for being with us this morning. 
Amen. Appreciate it. And tomorrow is Sister Gail's birthday. And I think, amen, so, amen, her sister's coming to be with her. They, they had a little birthday party for her yesterday. Sit, we'll ask you to just stand up, Sister Gail. We're going to sing happy birthday to you right quick. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's sing happy birthday to her. Birthday to you. To you. May you feel Jesus near every day of the year. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. May this be the best one you have had. Happy birthday. Hallelujah. Give her and the Lord a good hand. She's celebrating her 100th birthday. Would y'all get... Oh, I better hush. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Appreciate Sister Gail. Left a, amen. Laughter is a medicine. Sometimes we could use a bottle. Some of us could use a gallon. Somebody shout hallelujah. Some of us could take a bath in it. It wouldn't hurt us. Somebody shout hallelujah. God's a good God this morning. Amen. Appreciate this goodness. You may go to your Sunday schools this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, uh, Brother Michael's class needs to stay with me. He's not been able to be here this morning, so y'all got to stay with me this morning. Break the good news to you. Yes. They get to, amen. Yes. Hallelujah. You that have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Genesis this morning. Chapter, book of Genesis chapter 22 this morning. I want to show you some things and. You've got to remember a couple things. Anytime that God gets ready to do something, the devil will do his part also. And you have to be wise to the, de the, the enemy because you have to, uh, be don't, he will cheat you out of your blessing that God has intended for you. Amen. But God's a good God this morning, and I appreciate his mercy and all of his goodness this morning. Amen. In Genesis chapter 22, this is a familiar text, but it has so much profound power in it and examples and the things of God this morning. It's amazing that you could preach for a month on this and really never get through all of it in a series. But last Sunday, I also preached on, amen, the potter and the clay and, amen, and how that we should reflect Jesus. If your life is not reflecting the Lord, something's wrong in your life. I need to say that again. There's something blocking you in your life if your life is not reflecting the Lord. And the Bible says God wants you in his hands as the clay is the potter's, that God can make you like he wants you instead of you being like you want to be. Amen. So you think about that this morning. Am I being Christ-like? Am I really a Christian? Amen. Do I just go into church? Do I just go through the forms of being a religious, amen, person? Or do I know the Lord and do I want to be like him? As I've taught last Sunday, amen, can God do with you as the potter does the clay? When you see my life, am I reflecting the Lord or am I reflecting the carnality, the flesh, the things? And see, we're living in a world right now, amen, that the Apostle Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1 through 5, the Bible says that Paul says this. He said they shall be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. They'll be boasters. They'll be proud, arrogant, haughty, overbearing, blasphemers. They'll be foul-mouthed. They'll be abusive. They'll be profane. They speak evil of things they don't know the, the full intent of disobedient to parents, unthankful, ungrateful, liking in appreciation. How many knows we've done said enough right there that we're living in a very serious time? We really are. And that's just part of the things that Paul said. He said they'd be unloving, they'd be unholy, they'd be hard-hearted, they'd be unnatural, they'd be uncalloused, they'd be calloused, they'd be unfeeling. We're living there today. We're living in a very serious time, and, all, and we're not attacking any person, but these are spirits that get a hold of people, and, and they're out there like magnets just looking to attach to a to person or to people, amen, that will give them a ground to do that. Amen. Now, look at this. 
See if any of our life fits any of this. Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, profane, irreverent. Amen. Um, been not able to control one's uh, words. Unloving, hard-hearted, unnatural, callous, unf unforgiving, refuse to make peace, refusing efforts towards reconciliation, slander, speaking false things against others, without self-control, brutal, savage, unprincipled, despisers of good, haters of whatsoever is good. This is in your Bible, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1 through 5. And I don't think any of us is going to escape this one, headstrong. Ooh. Haughty, making empty pretensions, conceited, lovers of pleasure more than the lovers of God. You think about that but they don't love God. Now, this is a serious hour that we're living in, and I want to go to the book of Genesis 22 and 1, and it goes with this this morning because either we're going to reflect the things of God or we're reflecting the, ourself. Amen. And a lot of times self gets in the way of what God wants to do, or he does in my life. Anybody else in here with me this morning? Now, I know some of you may, amen, I love you to death, but amen, you know, you, you, you need to listen to this because it's very important to what God has to say to us, amen. The Bible said it came to pass after these sayings that God did tempt or test Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thy loveth, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him therefore a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I shall tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, saddled his donkeys, and took with him two young men with him, Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, rose up and went to the place which God had told him. And then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto the young men, Abide ye here with the donkey, and I will, I will go yonder and worship and come again to you. I want to stop right there. Let's go back to verse number one this morning. And amen. And I, I want to bring out some things that the Lord dealt with me upon. And as I said a while ago, amen. I, and I pray this prayer all week God, I want to be the clay that's in your hands. God, I want to be what you want me to be, not what Wayne wants me to be. Amen. Now, when I look at this scripture and I see some things in it this morning, amen, I, I, I ask myself this question, how far will I trust God? How far will I trust God? I say I put it in his hands, but how far will I trust him? Can I get a witness in the house? How far will I trust God this morning? Amen. As far as I can see or as far as I understand. Now, this is the thing with you and I this morning. Amen. I trust God if I can understand things. But when God doesn't make sense, how do I respond to God's word? How do I respond when I say, God, I don't see how this is going to work out? When God spoke to Abraham and said, I want you to take your son. But first of all, before Abraham ever, God ever said anything to Abraham, he said it like this right here, and I love this. Amen. God spoke unto Abraham, and Abraham quickly answered, amen, this call. Lord, here am I. But you know what Abraham was saying, the here am I? It meant that he was ready to be taught, ready to obey, ready to surrender, and he was ready to be examined by God. And when God said this, God had a purpose in what he was doing. God always has a purpose for everything that goes on in your life. God will never allow anything to go on in your life that God will not have a purpose for that somewhere. And the things you go through will reveal to you who you really are. Amen. Hallelujah. Had a person one time to tell me. They said, I, he said, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't have a temper. 
And it wasn't about three days later I was with that person, and a little something happened, and that dude blowed the car roof off. I thought, boy, you don't know who you are. Why is this a little tight in here this morning? Can I get a witness in the house? See, I think, I'm, see, I, some people only know God if they're shouting or if they're doing this. And I love our, both of those things. But I got to know the voice of God, that God is real, regardless of what I see or what I feel or what I understand. Amen. Is God in full control of my life? How far will I trust God? How far will I go with God? Amen. Now, I, I see some of these commercials on TV, and everybody's got something to make your life better. One's got this, and amen. And, and when you, if you take this, you're pain-free. If you take that, man, you're 20 years younger. How many's ever seen them commercials and wished you had that product? And some of you have bought them products, and you're still not 20 years younger yet. And you're still not pain-free. You never have a life that will not have pain in it somewhere. But, you know, pain is just an indicator of something going on in your body. Pain is not the, that's just a symptom. I guess that way you'd use it. It's just a red light flashing that there's something going on in your life. So when, when things come into your life and that red light's a flashing, you have to say, God, what are you trying to show me? What are you trying to teach me? Now, God is a friend to Abraham. Now, listen, folks, when you get God and, and, and Abraham together and God calls Abraham his friend, now you would think that if God is your friend, he would not ask certain things of your life. He wouldn't ask for you to surrender or to yield or to trust me. Now, sometimes God's word gives us a promise in it, but also, amen, I'd rather trust the promiser than the promise. Well, well, the promise will take care of itself if I trust the promiser. I'd rather have the blesser than the blessing. How many still with me this morning? So the Bible said it came to pass that Abraham, amen, that God did ask Abraham, said, I want you to do something for me, Abraham. And he said, I want you to take your only son. Now, you've got to understand something, amen. Abraham did have another son, Psalms tw- uh, or, uh, uh, Pro- or uh, Genesis 21 in verse number 8, amen. Abraham had another son, but it wasn't by the promise that God gave him, amen. Sarah thought that she couldn't have a child, and she convinced Abraham to go into their, uh, hand, her handmaiden, Hagar, and have a child by a younger woman. Amen. But this is not what God said. See, anything that God's not involved in, God don't have to move in. And that's very important in mind in your life this morning. Amen. Now, through the mercies of God, he will. But see, the Bible said, the child, this is Ishmael. The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. Amen. And here's, here we go. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had born unto Abraham, mocking. He despised the little boy. He despised the little child, Isaac. Amen. And he realized that these two boys was not going to get along. Therefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman, her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heirs with my son, even with Isaac. Isaac, do you get nervous every time I holler Isaac? <laughs> and the very thing was grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. He loved Ishmael, amen. But the thing about it was the promises of God and the flesh will never agree. Are y'all with me this morning? What God says and what the flesh says is contrary one to another. The, the, the Spirit of God says, in love, forgive, and the flesh says, only if. There are people today, if you got on your hands and knees and crawled to your knees bled, they would not really forgive you. How many, how many notice people like that? And if you got that kind of problem, you need to get on an altar I got a preacher friend of mine, had a great need in his life. Preachers have needs in their lives too. 
And he had a great need in his life. And this need, amen, it seemed like this. he had a battle with something. And, and he battled and he battled. And he just seemed like he couldn't get to it. But this preacher, young man, would go to the altar about every Sunday. And he would pray every Sunday. Didn't matter what. Any, and you can see the glory of God work on this young preacher, man, every time he goes to that altar. You can see God move in his life. And he would have victory like he had not had. Then after he thought that he was doing just a little bit better, he would slack up going to the altar. He wasn't getting victory over what? He was getting better, but not victory. See, amen, God was getting ready to ask Abraham to do one thing. I want you, Abraham, you've got to confront something in your life. I do not want you to be half-hearted in anything that you do for me. Now, Abraham, you've got a son. Amen. And so, go on to the next verse right here. We'll finish this one up. Amen. And see, and, and also the son of the bondwoman, I will make a nation because he is thy seed. This is what God said. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, took bread and a bottle of water, and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child, and sent her away, and she departed into the wilderness of Beersheba. Now here's the thing. Amen. There has to come a time that you've got to separate yourself from yourself. Now, the natural wane... We're going to preach about me this morning. I don't know if y'all like this or not, but the natural Wayne would like to get a handful of somebody sometime. Now, don't y'all sit there, turn them halos off. Some of y'all would climb a tree to spite somebody and can't even walk on level ground. Come on. Now, this is the Wayne. I'm preaching about Wayne here. But here is the spiritual Wayne that's been born again. And I have a choice. Am I going to live for God or am I going to live for me? Am I going to do it the way God wants it done? Or am I going to do it the way Wayne wants it done? Amen? Amen? Now, do I want to treat people bad? Listen, listen. Other day, I, I, I was around somebody, and, and, and I didn't know it. I didn't know it. I, I wasn't mean to him. Now, don't get, don't get me wrong. Amen. But this person was in such a bad shape. They were stressed to the max. They had a need in their family, a sickness, and it was just eating away at them. And they was in bad shape. And I watched another person react to them while they were in the pit. See, you never know when somebody's in the pit. Oh, they may be sitting there looking at you, but they may be in the pit. They may be in the pit of despair. They may be in a pit of, uh, uh, of I don't know what I'm going to do. It's hopeless. And what do I do when I get there and I see that person and they've got all kinds of traits, amen, that irritates me and causes me to want to respond in the way that they are responding. Now, when God said to Abraham, Abraham, and he said, here am I, immediately he said, God, here am I, I'm willing. He didn't know what God was going to ask him, but he said, I'm ready. I'm ready to do what you tell me to do, God. Are we still clay in the potter's hand that we can say, God, I'm ready. God, if you take me to Egypt and sell me as a slave, I'll still serve you. God, if you allow sore balls to come up on my body, that I, amen, that it's so painful that I think I'm going to die and I pray to die, will I still be faithful to you? Job prayed that, amen, amen, he didn't want the day he was born. He said, I wish that day had never been. I wish what would have happened the day that I was born, that the messenger had went to my father and told him uh, that, amen, you've had a son, but he died. That's how bad Job was. But the thing about it with God, he said, I'm ready, God, to do anything you want done. But when you get a people of God that's ready to do anything that God is wanting to do in their life, we'll see a move of God like we ain't never seen in our life. You'll see a move of God in your life. If nobody has revival, you'll be revived by the power of the Holy Ghost.
Young people, you need to realize that this morning, all of this building. Are you in the hands of God? Are you submitting to God? Are you going to have it your way? I've had it my way before. Anybody ever raise your hand if you ever had it your way? Oh, did you make a mess? Did you? I don't know. Maybe it all worked out for you. <laughs> it caused me tears. It caused me anguish. Listen, folks, I know people have been saved for 35 years, and they still have things that they wish to God they'd never done. They're forgiven. They've been set free by the power of God, and they're on their way to heaven, but yet they have things, amen, that's a constant reminder that wish they'd never done it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, Abraham said, here am I, Lord. And he said, take your son, your only son. Now, I want you to look at this this morning. How far will I trust God? And Amen. W what are we going to do with this text this morning? When God begins to say some things that amen, that's, seems like out of line and out of character, the way that God is. I've walked with God. God's a loving God. God's a kind God. God's a merciful God. God's a God that, amen, that doesn't require this and don't require that. And all the Canaanite gods around, uh, around Abraham, they required human sacrifice. It was nothing to offer somebody up for a sacrifice in the land of Canaan. Human sacrifice was a common thing in that hour. They would offer their children. They would take their little children and lay them on a burning altar of fire, amen, and consume them children to please the gods. But Abraham walked with God in such a way that he thought he knew God enough that God was not like all of them other gods. You hear what I'm saying to you this morning? Abraham believed that God was different. He was Jehovah God. He was the great I am God. He was the God that could do what nobody else could do. He already knew that by himself. Amen. Given, uh, by, by having uh, Isaac had been born uh, when he was 100 years old and Sarah 99. He knew that was an impossibility to happen, and he knew that God was good. Now, all of a sudden, he's in a trial and a battle of his life when God says, I want you to take your son, and your only son, and I want you to take him to a certain place, amen, and give him to me. Do I still trust God now? Do I still, do I still hold my integrity with God, or do I fall apart? Just come loose at the seams and start saying things that I don't know what I'm talking about. See, if I don't live to, to I love living, but if I don't live till tonight, he's a good God. I don't know what I'd do. They see that if we was all, me and my wife and my kids was in the car together and they all got killed and I lived. Would I hurt? Yes. Would I cry? <laughs> but is my faith in God stronger than everything that I possess in the natural? When the doctor says, it looks cancerous, we got to do more tests. I got a friend of mine, amen, good woman, good, good, good lady. She's a good lady. Got to have a little cough. And the doctor treated her, gave her some antibiotics and said, you know, she just had a little fluid in her lung and just and different things. And for about a year and a half, they've treated her for just having a little infection or little little um, stuff in her lungs and nothing. And finally, she just keeps getting worse. And she goes to the doctor, another doctor, and they do tests and they say, you have lung cancer. But you don't just have lung cancer. It's went from your lungs to your brain. And she served the Lord as faithful as anybody could. She's the apprentice woman that you can know of. When I go in that church, how are you, Brother Keith? So good to see you and your wife. Very, very godly woman. But she's got cancer in her lungs. It's went to her brain. Now, does God change in this? Does God change? Does my opinion change of God? I'm preaching y'all this morning. 
How do I serve God when I don't understand? See, if every little fly that lights on you, you just go his other day, a while back, a while back, this is back in the fall of the year, me and another guy, big guy, y'all know him if I called his name, big guy, we were standing there, we were talking, this wasp began to buzz around. This man went ballistic. I said, what are you doing? I said, it's just a wasp. I mean, he just, ah. Yeah, he just, and he, he just carrying on. And that wasp is not, not, don't need to be trying to attack him or either what. But he just goes ballistic. He said, the last time I got stung, I almost died. My throat swelled together. I couldn't breathe. And if I hadn't, somebody hadn't got me to the doctor. Uh, the best I remember him saying, Somebody had, had an epic pain. Is that what they're called? I had one and realized what was, and, and, and gave it to him. Or he could have died that very day. See, sometimes we don't understand things. The moment we don't understand, we automatically, what's going on with you? What I preached to y'all this morning. See, that could have killed him. It would have harmed me because I'd be quiet. Hurt a little bit. Somebody shout amen. So here's what I'm trying to say to you this morning. How do I serve God this morning? And he said, I want you to take your son, not just your son, but your only son. Now, I'll make Ishmael. I know Ishmael's there, but he's not the son of promise. He's not not what I'm going to work with. He's not what I've chosen. I've got to hurry because I've got stuff to preach in here. But it's good news this morning. It's only 10 o'clock, about three minutes after 10. So I've got a, whoo, glory to God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Isn't God, I just got encouraged for about an hour right longer. But anyhow, past that this morning. Hallelujah. God is good this morning. Somebody shout God is good. And when you look at this, young folks, and, and you see this, every one of us in our lives, amen. And this is why mom and daddies, young people, all, all time said, don't, yes, no, uh, huh, 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 huh. hold the line. Because <laughs> they already know what will happen if you ain't careful. Can I get a witness in the house? Now, what are we going to do with this text? Amen. You know, it's really, and, and, and you'd have to say it to a point, amen, it's sort of horrifying for God to ask a man to give his only son out of burnt offering. Hello? Let God ask you to do that. Come here, Isaac. Come here, bub. Now, can you imagine? This is my grandson. This is my only grandson. Amen. Blood wise. I got two. Somebody shout amen. I think the others done cut his wrist and got my got blood. <laughs> Somebody shout amen. Amen. His name is Cannon. I call him Cannon. He say, you talk like your daddy. But anyhow, this is my grandson. And for God to tell me not to burn him, but to never speak to him and to never have nothing to do with him ever again. God said, I don't want you to talk to him. I don't want you to speak to him. I want you to be as he never existed. What do you think that would do for me? Now, this is bad enough. Say, at least he's alive. Maybe I can see him go down the road. But if he's coming down the road, I can't even throw my hand up. I can't smile at him. What would that do to me? What would that do to my foundation? And we are over petty nonsense not go to heaven for it. Amen, Brother Wayne. But if God just told me, never speak to him again. Never have nothing to do. Never ask about him. 
my flesh would have to think of this. God, you get lost. Don't y'all sit there and be holy and pious on me. Because that ain't God. Oh, let me get a second opinion. See, when we got to go and get people to, to, to prove that we're right, you're not right. When you've got to get a whole boatload of people on your boat to try to prove that you're something, you're nothing. Amen. If I don't know I'm right, amen, you ain't going to make me right. I got to know by God I'm right. Somebody shout hallelujah in here. Amen. Could you imagine, son? I love you, baby. Man, I love you. Like my bub. Amen. God tell me. Abraham, here's another part. Amen. I don't know if we're going to get through this or not. Amen. We may have to have a revival. Abraham is somewhere about 130 years old now. He's from somewhere from 130 to 133 years old. Abraham is an old man. Abraham or Isaac is somewhere that they calculated again that Isaac is somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 to 33 years old. Abraham is taking a, a young man, not a lad, not a little boy. He's taking a man to the cross to a sacrifice. And it takes three days. This is all a type of why you're here today. And it takes three days to get there. Can you imagine in the mind of Abraham what he's got to deal with for three days and knowing what he's going to do? But he says, God, I trust you. It's painful, but I trust you. God, I don't understand. And, brother, when I don't understand things, amen. now if I can understand something, glory to God, look out, devil, I'll black your eye in a heartbeat. But when I don't know and I can't see God working, I can't see God moving. Is this good to y'all this morning? And I don't understand. Why would God say this? Why would God do this? God, you should move on this. God, I need you to, to do something on this. God, What am I going to do? I still, Sister Jean laying in that bed of a morning after that wreck, and them feet, she can't get up. She, she, she can't get out of bed. She can't turn over. We've got to turn her over. We've got to pick her up on sheets when we change the beds. They got things on her feet to make sure she don't get blood clots. Her legs don't even look like you don't know what they even look like. They're horrible looking. Her back is broke. Her one arm is in a cast. And she'll get that little laptop every morning and she'll push that song. I still trust you, Lord. I still trust you. And she'd sing that song. Sometimes it get on my nerves. That's just the truth. She lay in that bed and just sing that song. She couldn't get up. She couldn't go to the bathroom. She couldn't do nothing. She sang that song. I still trust you, Lord, every morning. Sometimes if I went outside to the her station, she, I'd come back in. I still trust you, Lord. I still trust you. Amen. See, I, I can preach, but why don't I'm not preaching, what am I? You say amen, but what are you when you ain't amening? This is where we get down to where it's real or not. Huh? Thank you, son. Thank God he ain't done that. I can put five men for that boy right there and never bat an eye about it. Not even think about it. That's how confident I am for that boy. You say, well, they're bigger than you. I don't, big ain't got to do with it. Just when you get ugly on an ape, amen, you start to get it off. Somebody shout amen. <laughs> a 
Well, let's go back to the spiritual side this morning. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, and you know what? And that boy ain't done nothing for me what God's done for me. How far will I go with God this morning? How far will I trust God this morning? Am I preaching to y'all this morning? Amen. I told him when Jeannie was pregnant, I said this grandchild stuff, that hoopla, I said all that stuff about being, a, a, I said that's a bunch of nonsense. Somebody shout hallelujah. But when you experience it, it's another story. Amen. And God says, Abraham, I want you to take your only son, and I want you to offer him up. I want you to kill him, amen, as an act of faith. Amen. And God just didn't say, if you think about it, or, uh, Abraham, if you want to, he was commanded to do that. Just good preaching this morning. Go back to Genesis 22. Amen. I know that God's a mighty good God this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of y'all want to trust God this morning? Amen. Listen, folks. Amen. I, Abraham didn't have anything left. He had sent Ishmael away. Amen. Eleazar, his servant, was not his heir. And now he's taking his only heir. Amen. He's going to slay him. Amen. The presence of God. Uh, amen. But Abraham says one thing. Uh, amen. I believe I can sing that song. Uh, I still trust you this morning. Uh, after 40 some years uh, of serving God, uh, I can tell you one thing. You can trust God this morning. Uh, you may hurt, you may cry. Uh, you may wonder, uh, you may walk the aisles, you may not sleep of a night sometime, but one thing you can do, uh, God is trustworthy, uh, God is faithful, uh, and God will be there uh, when it's all said and done. Uh, can I get a witness this morning? Uh, he's still God, uh, he still cares, uh, he still feels, uh, he still knows, uh, and friend, uh, amen, you love him, uh, but you got to trust him. Uh, when everything in the world's all crashing around you, you got to love him. Uh, somebody give God a shout of praise. Uh, Come on, give God a, a shout of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Abraham responds in faith. He gets up the next morning. He, he gets the wood. He gets the fire. He gets the donkeys. He gets the servant. He gets uh, Isaac. Uh, and they go on their way. Uh, and for three days, uh, amen, they're gone. Amen. And finally he lifts up his head and he sees the mountains. God says, Mount Moriah. That's the place called Calvary. It's the place called the place of the skulls. It was called Jerusalem later in the Bible. And Jesus was crucified out of the city gates of Jerusalem on a hill called Calvary. Somebody shout hallelujah. God has got a plan. And God was just showing the world through it all. And he said, I want you to take your only son, the son whom thou loveth. Now here's the thing. From Genesis 1, 1, all the way to Genesis chapter 22, this is the first time love is ever mentioned in the Bible. It's Genesis chapter 22. From Genesis 1 to 22, love is never mentioned in the Scripture. He said, take your only son, the son that you love. And I want you to take him. And I want you to offer him up for me as a burnt sacrifice. Can I get a witness? Amen. My title of this message this morning is, Are You Willing to Lay It Down? Are you willing to lay anything that's in your life that's robbing you of your victory? Are you willing to lay it down this morning? It can be costly. Anything that interferes between you and God. God says, hey, I don't care about your thing. I want to bless you with cars, houses, lands. Hey, Amen. I'll give you anything that you, giving you something is not the problem. It's what you do with it after you get it. And what are you going to do? Is Isaac going to interfere in mine and your relationship? Is Isaac going to, amen, and it's not Isaac's fault. But we can get attached to things sometimes. We can get attached, amen, and I don't mean this critically in no kind of a way because I, I, I've had pain, but sometimes we can start worshiping our bodies when he gets a little, feeling a little bad, or I ain't going to serve God, I ain't going to do this, I can't do this no more, amen. And we start worshiping this body instead of worshiping God sometimes. Hello? But off to the mountains and off to the creek and off to the lake and, you know, the body feels better there. <laughs> well, glory. 
Amen. Is that still good preaching? No, there's nothing wrong with none of them things. God give it to us to enjoy. But I don't want it to come between me and God. Amen. So the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and he saw the place fall. Next verse, I've got to get through this because I've got to go somewhere else. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the donkeys. Amen. I know what it says. And the lad and I will go yonder. Back it up. Back it up, son. Amen. Just a moment. Thank you, Dan. You do a great job. Amen. It's just me. Amen. The lad and I will go yonder and worship. Now, this is the first time from Genesis 1, 1 to Genesis 22 and 5 is the word worship. The first time that the word worship in the Bible is mentioned, amen, is right here. Genesis 22, 5. Love and worship is in this scripture for the first time in the Bible from Genesis 1 up to this point. I mean, I'll say what I'm saying to you. Okay. So here is the thing. Amen. Love and worship go hand in hand. Anything you love, you worship. Ever what you love the most, that's where you'll find your heart. That's where you'll find your most time and you'll find every desire, anything. Listen, folks, I, and I know, I know, I know, and I don't mean this critically in no kind of a way to anybody, but amen. It was, maybe God tells you to give a sacrificial offering, maybe $100 or $200 or $500 or 1000 maybe 5 maybe 10 maybe 20 I don't know what it would be, amen. But you know what? Sometimes we'll wrestle with God and say, well, they don't need it. It ain't, listen, when God tells you something, it ain't about the other person. It's about you. Are you willing? Are you willing? Willing to do what God asks you to do. When God says, Amen, well, you gotta for you got Amen. God, God says you don't have to forgive nobody. You don't have to forgive people. But when you look what God's done for you, you can't help say, God, look what I was. And you forgave me. And I'm supposed to be like you? <laughs> Everybody just take a deep breath because I know it's hour early, but we got to go on. Somebody shout hallelujah. God's good this morning. What are you willing to lay down this morning that keeps you from drawing close to God this morning? The Bible says in the book of Mark, chapter 10, there's another young man, good man, good boy. Good young man. Man, this guy is, he, he is the perfect example of a son. Isaac, Braxton, who, how many more boys we got in here this morning? Raise your little hand. Amen. Good boy. He honors his mother and father. He don't lie. Wow, that's a pretty good name there. I ain't sure about that old boy wasn't stretching some. Somebody shout amen. He just said he had. Somebody shout amen. Go to Mark 10. Okay, go to, let me see, let me see if I can find a verse here. You got a verse on there, Daniel? Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah again. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 10, verse 17. Look at this, verse 17. Amen. Everybody shout good guy. And when he had gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeling to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Now listen, look, look how he asked this question. What can I do to inherit eternal life? What shall I do? What, what can I do to get eternal life? Life beyond this life. Next verse. And Jesus said unto him, Why call thou me good? There is none good but one, and that is God. And what he was saying here was this, amen, amen. He was looking at him as a scribe, amen, or as, as something more, amen. And he said, you're looking at the flesh for answers, but it's the spirit that gives you the real answer. He said, Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not, uh, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not uh, fraud not thy... Uh, uh, do not bear false witness, fraud not. Amen. Honor thy father and thy mother. Listen what this man says. And he answered and said unto him, Master, I have done, I have, I, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. And what he was saying was, I've tried to keep every one of these, and I, I, I'm a good guy. If good got you to heaven, it wouldn't be heaven because you ain't changed. The commandments are awesome, but they don't change you. They just tell you what kind of behavior you have. 
if I'm running 65 and a 55, it's telling me I'm going 10 miles over the speed limit. Cost me some money if I get caught. Somebody shout amen. And I, 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 I listened to a documentary one time of all the excuses people give an officer, and you cannot believe in what they can tell them guys. I mean, some of them stack high. Somebody shout amen. But anyhow, and just beholding him, loved him. Now, I don't know about you. I love it when Sister Jean or one of my daughters or my grandsons or anybody that will, in a godly way, let me put my family first, will just look me in the eye and you see love in their countenance. I love you, man. Anything I can to help you. Man, that, now, if you've got any kind of heart at all, that'll, that'll cut you. Now, she'll lie to you. I ain't going to lie to you. Because <laughs> you want some paycheck. Somebody shout amen. I ain't gonna ask her. She still loves me. Somebody shout amen. But anyhow, how many knows the story? Amen. This is good, folks. This is good. Amen. <laughs> you want me? You, you want me tell the truth? Uh, you want, you want tell, you know, I'm, I'm, well, we ain't going now. Somebody shout hallelujah. And G, listen, folks. Amen. And, and, and this boy is sincere, but he's sincere in the wrong way. You know, you can be right in the wrong way. You believe that? Yes, sir. You can know the truth. You can have truth and speak at the wrong time, and it'll destroy instead of help. Amen. There's a time to keep your tongue inside your mouth. Preacher was preaching one time, and He's preaching a little bit on some stuff. And he's preaching on the tongue. And this lady, she said, Lord, I'm going to lay my tongue on that altar. And the preacher looked and said, ma'am, that altar's only 40 foot long. I'm like the little cat. Mm-hmm. Well, let's go past that one. Next mile marker. And Jesus loved him. But he said, you know, young man, you're good. Uh, can you imagine God looking at me and saying, you've got 99 things right? Man, you have measured up to 99 of them. You was like one thing. But that one thing was the God of his life. See, anything that's the God of your life will eventually show up. Mine going somewhere. And we can all be tempted. There's nothing wrong with that. Blessed the man that endure temptation. But when you see a person's heart, he said, you like us one thing. Sell whatsoever thou hast, give to the poor. Thou shalt have treasures in heaven. Come and take up your cross and follow me. Now, I want to ask you a question. If that young man had been willing to give up that and been willing to give it, the Lord said, no, I, don't, I really don't want it. I just want you to be willing to do it. See, that young man, see, God don't always ask the same thing from everybody. It's ever once it's in your life or my life that God says, it's time you got to give it up. Is this good preaching, y'all? One guy said, are y'all listening? <laughs> Now, you think about this. It's what that gets into you, amen, that you say, I can't turn loose. God, I'll give you this. I'll give you that. Had a lady one time come tell me. She said, I've given God my house. I've given God my car. I've given God my kids. I said, yeah, but have you given him you? And she hadn't. God's not interested in your car that's in a junkyard somewhere today. And all the money you got is just paper. Somebody shout amen. And the government's broke, so really, to a point, amen, that, pay, that money ain't worth the paper it's wrote on. You say, I don't believe that. Amen. If they don't raise this de- uh, ce- uh, ceiling debt, amen, we're bankrupt. Y'all understand that? 
if, 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 if Japan wanted to, they shut our doors. They own us. We are, we are slave to the lender. Amen, Brother Wayne. <laughs> this young man, the Lord said, you're just like one thing. You're a good guy. But to have eternal life, it's not about what you've done. It's not about even honoring your father and your mother. And these things will line up in contest if after you'll love me. Deuteronomy chapter 6 this morning. This is what God says. This is the first commandment of all the commandments. Deuteronomy chapter number 6 this morning and verse number 5. Give God a shout of praise. Amen, somebody. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. Listen to me this morning. Now. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. God said, I'll bless you. I'll give you gold. I'll give you houses you didn't build. I'll bless your business. I'll bless your vines. I'll bless your cows. I'll bless your chickens. I'll bless your money. I'll bless everything you got. But one thing about all I ask is one thing, that I'm still number one in your life. Can I get a witness? in here. The, what's the difference between this young man and an old man be called Abraham? Abraham, I believe, loved God as much as the rich young man loved his money, if not more. Think about this. I search myself when I'm preparing messages. I search myself. I pray. God, I, I want to make sure I'm doing over there before I come in here. God knows every one of us. He knows our heart. He knows our way. And God is never saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat you to death if you don't line up. God says, just keep loving me and you'll keep going. Everything else will work out. Uh Brother Tim, you had a problem last year, real bad problem, serious problem. You just didn't see nothing there. What was that about? Wow. Perfect answer. It came and it went. But how you respond, will you be here after the problem? And what kind of condition will we be in after the problem? This is good preaching for you. I've preached it for 40 some years, and it's as real today as it was then. Somebody they said, How old is that preacher? I'm 39. I'm holding. I've been holding a long time. Somebody shout hallelujah. Is that right, Sister Carol? Thank you, sis. Amen. God is good. Somebody shout, God is good. Amen. God is good. Amen. But I want you to understand this. This young man that wanted eternal life thought he could do something to get it. Listen, you only have eternal life for one thing, and that's Jesus. You can't buy him. You can't swindle him. You can't flatter him, you can't pretend him, because when the trial comes and the storm comes, it reveals everything, because it blows all the old junk away, and you stand before God, and when I look into God's word, I do just like I did with that mirror last Sunday, I look in it sometimes, I say, God,
Because, amen, he's having to seek God. Can I get a witness in here? Can God make you like he wants you? Someone says, oh, it won't be bad to go to hell. I've had people tell me that. I had a young lady one time, she looked at me and she was smart with her mouth. She said, my daddy will go to hell. And she said, I'm going to go with him. That was her words. And that girl today is the hard, hardest person I've ever in my, she is the most, I don't even know if, to this one point that she is even human. It's cold. She's, she don't live. And if she does, she lives to hurt and to mangle. She has no friends. Her husband is some kind of a, a zombie. You think she's got something because she makes him toe the line. She ain't got nothing. Somebody shout amen. She's afraid of him. And she has to do something to manipulate him, to bring him into that place. Somebody shout amen. If I, if I screw this up, brother, I mean to screw it up that way. Hallelujah. Somebody shout God's good. But I look at this lady. I look at this lady. And she'll do this. She'll look into the heavens. She'll look up in the sky. She'll look at something. And she'll blaspheme it without any kind of fear at all. And by marriage, this young lady is kin to me. She is that kind of bitter. She's that kind of resentful. She, if she could get a God a hold of the neck, she would choke him. And if God doesn't somehow... If she doesn't become willing and somehow humble her heart, she will spit hell wide open and hell will not be the place she thought it was. I'm going to tell you something. I don't even like the grave, let alone hell. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm not looking forward to nobody throwing dirt in my face. Somebody, I know I'm not going to be there, but somebody shout hallelujah anyhow. God's good God. And today, Abraham took it. Come here, son. Come here. Could you imagine? Now, this young man, stout. He's getting stouter all the time. I feel of his muscles every now and then. I'm going to embarrass him a little bit. It's all right. He's as handsome as he can be. He looks just like his grandpa. Say amen, brother. Thank you. Jim, huh? Could you imagine us going up the hill? He looks and says, Papa, you've got the fire. you got the knife. I don't see no sacrifice. That old prophet of God, that's called a friend of God that says, God, I trust you. God will provide himself a lamb. And he takes him on top of that mountain. They build that altar, and they lay, and Isaac becomes submissive that he lets his hands be tied. And he lays him on an altar where the wood and the fire, he lays him on that altar. Isaac does not try to run away. Isaac does not try to, 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 to roll off that altar. He lays on that altar in submission. Because he's willing 
He has seen the example from his father here in my. You ever wonder, you ever say, you ever say this to your children, you acted just like your mama. Now don't get puffy on me. You acted just <laughs> acting just like your daddy. Come on. Thank y'all. Thank you. Isaac lays on that altar. Now, I don't mean to hit you too hard, but it's just the truth. I told Gene the other day, I said, God, them girls are a copy, copy of you. Oh, they ain't. They're more like you. That's what problem, ain't it? Thank you. <laughs> he ain't here. Glory to God. <laughs> but anyhow, he takes him and he lays him on that altar. And he gets that sharp knife out of his hand, out of the satchel. And he takes that knife. Can you imagine? I believe he's a trembling. I believe he's sick in his stomach. I believe he's saying, God, 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 you've been so good to me. You give him to me. You give him to me. Everything you got, God give it to you. You say, well, I, I worked hard for that. God gave you the health to get it. And if you didn't have the health, you couldn't get it. God gave you the ability to get it. God put favor in people's lives. Amen, that you can get where you're at today. And he takes that knife. Come here, Patrick. And then God sends an angel and gets him by the hand because he knows that Abraham is going to drop that hand and that knife right into the heart of Isaac. God said, don't touch him. Don't do him no harm. Because Isaac is not what I'm looking for. It's just I won't make sure that there's nothing between me and you, God, between me and you, Abraham. And he unties Isaac. I believe there was a cry and a hallelujah, glory to God. And they hear something going on, man, over the bushes. He says, there's a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. Offer him up to me. How many knows that God will? And he called the place Jehovah Jireh. Can I get a witness in the house this morning? God will always show up right on time. It may be down to the darkest moment. It may be down to the one uh, the, to a mill of a second. Uh, but God knows when. God knows how. Can I get a witness in this house this morning? Thank you all. As I close this morning, that's nothing but a type and a shadow and a picture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That who shall believe in him should not perish. You know what? The saddest thing in history, if a man goes to hell, because nobody has to go to hell. Not one person has to go to hell. If we'll humble our hearts before God, as they get ready to come to music, if they humble their hearts before God and say, God, I'm willing to do it your way. Lord, would you do it this way today? God, am I acting like you when somebody's irritating me? How frustrated do I get, God, when people don't do it my way? God, you don't heal my body. And God, that old God, there have been running. He don't care about you, don't even love you. He don't care. And God, I'm suffering. God, why don't you care for me? Give it to him. I'll serve you. But God says, do you love me enough that you'll take it all to the Lord in prayer? Can I get a witness in this house? Would you raise your hands and say, God, I would love to be an Abraham this morning. Would you? 
Would you like to be that you can lay it all down this morning? Are you willing to lay it down? Are you willing to lay it down? Who's influencing you this morning? Your friend that you think's a friend, but you cross them and see how much a friend they are to you. You disagree with them and see what kind of friend they are to you. Make them a little ill and see what they do to you. I've had folks shake my hand and put $50 in it and pat me on the back and say, you're the best preacher in the world. First time I got on a little pet, out the door they went and talked about me like a dog. They wasn't my friends. They were using me. They get power when they use you. Let's quit preaching this morning. Where are you going to stand before God this morning? It all belongs to God. God give you your first breath. and God gives you your last one. Where will you be with God this morning? You think about it. Would you just bow your heads this morning and say, God, am I willing or am I going to be like the rich young ruler? Am I going to turn and walk away? Will I walk away and reject? Lord, you said if I would sell what I had and give to the poor, that I have treasures in heaven. And but today, Lord, what am I going to do? Every one of you have a decision for yourself. Others may help you make a decision, but you need to make that decision. Wednesday night after church, Two-thirds of the people were gone. A young man walked up to me after church. I shook his hand. I said, so good to have you in church tonight. And he went to crying. Brother Jeff was standing here and a couple more. He went to crying. I said, young man, I said, are you saved? He said, no. Church is over. We're all gone just about. And he cries and he accepts Jesus as his Savior after church. And we just have a little shouting time right here. That young man, you can see the difference in his face. The burden had gone. The guilt had gone. The troubles had gone. Would you just raise your hand and say, God, I want to be what you want me to be. Come on, would you raise your hands and love you this morning? Would you say, Lord, here am I. Here am I this morning, oh God. God, here am I this morning. I want to be willing. God, I want to be willing to lay it down this morning. How many could lay it on that altar this morning? Are you going to keep that thing in your heart till it becomes a weight and it will sink you? Come on, raise your hands and love him. Would you lay it down this morning? When I lay my Isaac down, hallelujah. Would you raise your hands and love him all over this building? Come on, raise your hands and love him, church. God's talking to you because this ain't about you this morning. It's about him. It's not about you. Can you raise your hand and say, it's not about me? It's not about me this morning. It's not about you. This altar is open this morning. If anybody wants to lay their Isaac on that altar, it may be a sin. It may be a little pet thing. It may be your attitude. It may be something that you're dealing with, struggling with a, with a habit. But God wants you to lay it all down this morning. Abraham prayed for the day. Would you come this morning? God would give him a son. See, See. I'd like to pray this morning. This altar's open. Who would have Anybody, been. you don't have to be lost. God would you can just have an Isaac in your way this morning. Anybody got an Abraham, uh, Isaac in your way this morning? Sing it. Will prove Sing it. It's not your Isaac that he wants. He wants you. Anybody want to pray this morning? When I Anybody want to lay your eyes and go this altar and say, God, I don't want to walk away. I want to come to you. God, I'm struggling. I'm in a battle. Things are not going good, but God, God, I want a heart that's right this morning.
testified that it wasn't him. God wanted me. Sing it, sing it. Now most of all, Anybody that else I dare pray? to say It wouldn't hurt all of us just come out of this altar this morning Sick in God's way Would you just come out of this altar and say God I want to make sure God, just, God I want to repent God I just want to repent it's this morning not your eyes, it God just stops He wants you God I've been on that old phone too much and been when talking I too much Just to find that, that it wasn't him. him. God, God wanted me. me. And when I lay when I my, my eyes, eyes down, with a broken heart, heart oh, but my Father's oh, God. oh, God, we bring it and to I'm you this morning. On the way oh, the unforgiveness. God, Just the hurt. to find that it wasn't him. God, the disappointment. God, I want to lay it all down this morning, Lord. And most of all, God, I want to lay down my misunderstandings. Because, God, anytime there's division and strife, it's of the devil. God, if there's strife in my life this morning, it's of the devil. If there's division in my life, it's of the devil this morning. If there's bitterness in my life, God. God, I already had to send one son away. But this morning, God... Would you just help me? Would you just help me this morning, Lord? God, I want there to be nothing between me and you. God, I lay it all down this morning. I lay it down, Lord. Search me. Search me, God. And know me this morning. Cleanse me, God, of anything that I don't even know aware of. Help me, Lord, to say, here am I. Here am I this morning. Here am I this morning, Lord. Here am I. Here am I this morning, Lord. Here am I. I'm willing this morning. Here am I. Here am I this morning, Lord. Here am I. Hallelujah. Here am I, God. Here am I. Sing this song. Come on, would you worship him this morning? Would you love and worship him this morning? this morning if it's possible if it's possible just hug somebody's neck I know we ain't done that in a long time and I know some people don't want to if you don't just hug somebody's neck just say I love you this morning I won't lay my arms I won't lay my eyes down this morning Find you an Isaac and lay him down. Hallelujah. God wanted me. Can you sing it one more time? That I dare to say. We have an Isaac in God's way. But on this altar you can prove that it's not your Isaac that God wants. You're willing this morning. When I lay, when I lay my eyes down, to with a broken heart, a broken home, but my father's proud. And on this 
exalted Just to find that it wasn't him God wanted me How many of you say God's a good God this morning? I've had to lay several Isaacs on the altar over the years. One of the first ones I learned was when God, I was working 12 hours a day most time, making $60 a week, $12 a day what I made. They gave me a, a little trailer. It didn't equal out the, what I was working anyhow, but anyhow, I was making $60 a week. And God never told me to quit that $60 a week job and go preach. But it wasn't long after that that I started making $600 a week. And God spoke to him and said, quit your job and go preach. I said, God, I can't. I can't do that. I got two little girls. I got a wife. They like ice cream too. They never did get none, but I, they like it. I said, God, I can't do that. I can't do that. But God gave me a choice. And I laid that Isaac down. The next week, nobody gave me a big wad of money. Nobody come by and said, here's $5,000, go and get some ice cream. <laughs> but I put that Isaac on that altar. And I got to tell you this, the meal barrel never run dry. That's the goodness of God. Amen. God will always ask you something that you want to keep some time because he knows you get attached to it. But this morning, I think some people laid their Isaac down. Aren't you glad that you laid your Isaac down this morning? Let's give the Lord one more shout of praise, would you? <laughs> Hallelujah. And again, I want to say it's good to have uh, Sister Gail's sisters, uh, Martha and uh, Lois, this morning for their first time. Hope you all enjoyed yourself. And hope y'all come back and be with me. I could use the help sometimes. I ain't going no further, but I could use the help. But God is good. Amen. Amen. Somebody shout 630 tonight. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name.